Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to check for normality in data using R. So when we want to conduct some statistical tests, it's often very important to check to see if our data set is normally distributed or not, uh, because the type of data, data uh, our statistics tests performed could depend on whether our data are normal or not. So for example, if our data sets were no two data sets were normal, we could perform students t-test, but if one or both data sets were not normal, we would use a different test called the Mann Whitney U-test instead. So it's important to know whether our data are distributed normally or not. So in this video, we're going to take a look at three different methods. We're going to look at box plots, histograms, and then conduct a test called the shapiro wolf test to definitively decide whether data are normal or not. So I have created a, a data file. This data file is numbered number 82 to go with this video. It's a CSV file containing fictitious data that I have created for this video. So let's run this and print it out. So what it is, if I just look at the top of the data here, it's student data, uh, again, fictitious data, let me add. And these are test results for three subjects, mathematics, history, and geography. So what I'd like to be able to do so, so that I can uh, make some comparisons is I want to determine if the mathematics data is normally distributed, if the history data is normally distributed, and finally if the geography data is normally distributed. So the first way I'm going to do this is take a look at some box plots. So this is a very simple function to use, box plot, and in this I'm going to use uh, start off with the student data, dollar sign, I'm going to start off with the maths and perform, let, let's take a look at that. And we can see here in our box plot on the right-hand side, it looks as though it's normally distributed. The median, which is the black bar, is a little bit high, indicating a possible skew in my data. Let's talk, take a look at the next subject. And this is, the next subject is history, student data, dollar sign, history, and run that line of code. And we can see that the box plot is quite similar to the one for mathematics. So again, a possibility that the median is a little bit high here, indicating a possible slight skew. And let's take a look at the final box plot. Student data, dollar sign, in this case, geography. Run line number 10. And we can see of the three box plots that this one is probably the most normally distributed in the sense that the median value, the thick black bar in the center here, is almost right in the center. And my quartiles on my box plot are evenly matched. And there's no outliers on this or any of the other um, box plots. So uh, the box plots uh, are indicating that all three variables, maths, history, and geography, are evenly distributed with some evidence of slight skews in the mathematics and history data. So let's take a look at our second visual, which is the uh, to draw a histogram of each of these variables. So I'm going to start out with, again with the student data dollar sign maths, run this piece of code. And we can see here that there's a little bit of a skew towards the left here. There's a long lot of data in the left tail. This doesn't look like a typical bell-shaped diagram. So it's possible here that this is indicating that our data are not normally distributed. If it was this normally distributed, we'd be get much closer to a bell-shaped diagram. But it's still kind of nuts for certain here using the histogram. Let's take a look at the uh, history data. data. Student data dollar sign history and run line 13. We can see here again some evidence that there's a possible skew in here. It's not quite exactly bell shaped. And finally, let's take a look at the third variable, which is the geography variable. Student and GEO for geography. And run that line of code. And, oh, sorry, I'm getting an error there. It's student data. Uh, run. And we can see here that it's probably the best bell-shaped diagram of all three, but it's not clearly bell-shaped. So our evidence here from the visuals, I'm going to scroll back using the back arrow for the previous plots. So this is the histogram for geography. It's not a perfect bell shape, but it's quite close. Um, the history is not a perfect bell shape, but again, it's quite close. Uh, of all three histograms, the mathematics one is showing a skew to the left here. When I look at the histograms, uh, the geography histogram looks quite clearly normally distributed. 
um, the uh, history histogram here is showing a slight skew with the median value a little bit higher and the quartiles are not of equal size. And finally, the uh, first box plot that we drew shows, similar to the uh, history one, mathematics could be slightly skewed in the sense that the quartiles are not even and the median value is quite high. As I say, we have no outliers, so our data could very well be normally distributed. So from our visuals, we could, uh, we could there's good evidence here to assume normality based on either box plots or based on either histogram. And as you know, should know, when you are copying, uh, reporting a statistics test, you should uh, assess normality uh, either using visuals or using tests. So the test I'm going to use is the Shapiro-Wilk test. Now this is a function, S-H-A-P-I-R-O dot T-S-T. This test, and again, if you want to find out more about this, go to the uh, help screen and, and take a look at the Shapiro dot test function. That will give you information such as the um, syntax, arguments that you can use, and some examples and references using this test. So if you have not used it before, it's always a good idea to go to the help screen and check out the name of this function. So as before, I'm going to add in the three um, uh, variables here, student data, dollar sign, mathematics. So let me run that. And we're getting the results of the Shapiro-Wilk test here, where um, the R is telling us that the data being used is the mathematics data. We're getting the test statistic W, so that's the Shapiro-Wilk test statistic, that has a value of 0.96988. But the most significant value here is the p-value, and we can see that this is 0 0.021. So let's take a look at the other Shapiro test for the other two variables. So again, Shapiro test, open and close brackets, student data, dollar sign. This time, let's go for history and run this. And we're getting a second p-value here of um, 0.217. Uh, again, we've got a test statistic which we'd re report if we were reporting this test formally, but the p-value is the key thing we want here. And let's run the Shapiro test for the final Shapiro test, student data, dollar sign. Let's go for geography this time and run this. And we get a third p-value here. Now let me take a, a scroll up here so we can take a look at all of the data that's been generated. So there's our three tests in the code, line 16, 17, and 18 at the top. And when we look at the three values here, so there's a p-value for mathematics. It's 0 0.02162. This p-value is less than um, an alpha value. So if I had set the alpha value of, at 0 0.05, this p-value here is less than 0 0.05, therefore the mathematics data is not normally distributed. So this all depends on your what alpha value you set. If I had set my alpha value at 0 0.01, we can see that this p-value is not less than 0 0.01, therefore the data would be distributed uh, at a 1% risk of reporting a wrong result. But we're going with an alpha value of 0 0.05, therefore that's, this tells us mathematics p-value is less than 0 0.05, therefore the mathematics data is definitively not normally distributed. If I go down to the history data, we can see my p-value is 0.217, and that value is greater than my alpha value of 0 0.05, therefore the history data is normally distributed. And similarly for my last p-value here, the geography data has a p-value of 0.4425, which is greater than uh, alpha value of 0 0.05, therefore the geography data is normally distributed. So despite the fact that our uh, visuals are not conclusive, we can use the Shapiro test to de conclusively determine whether our data are distributed or not. And as we can see, one of our three data sets, uh, uh, variables here, is not normally distributed, uh, while two are. So for example, if I wanted to conduct an analysis of variance test to see if there was a significant difference between these three sets of data, between maths, history, and geography, uh, it would not be appropriate to do so because the one of the three data sets is not normally distributed and the ANOVA test relies on the assumption of normality. So that's how you um, determine uh, normality in a data set in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.